Okay. Hey guys. I hope you can see this. Um, the valve cover. It's a Hemi. So the plug wires go in the top of it here. They come. I spill them over. Uh, this one I've got drilled. I hope you can see how small the holes are. The drill bit. I don't know, guys. Um, I know it's smaller than 1164s. However, that works. I'm really a metric type guy. But anyways, this has pre-drilled holes in it. Well, they're they're there. You gotta tap them out. But and this is also a harder one. This is a funny car. And you got eight plugs on each side, so you're gonna have 16 wires going to this distributor cap. They're a bear to do. And I strongly suggest if you've never done this, try to start on another one. Do a regular 350 engine or a pro stock engine with just eight eight cylinders. But as you can see, they're solid. It's not. There's no holes. You can't put wires in it yet. But what I do. This drill bit's the exact right size because it leaves a little place in between here to separate the plugs. If you mess it up, don't worry about it. It's, as long as it's, you know, smoke and mirrors. But hold it between your fingers, guys. Because when this pops through, believe me, I've jammed these bits into my finger more than once. But you just put it in, drill it. There it is, pop through. I take it out, blow some of it out, then I move right over and I press the drill bit against the side of the other hole. I want to keep that little spacer between them. Again, a little bit of pressure and it pops through pretty easy. Now when you do one that's not made like this, and you got to do an engine where the distributor isn't a Chrysler, you know a Chrysler engine, I'll show you this. The distributor cap is on the front of the engine block, on a Chrysler, in the front of the manifold. And so is the Ford. The Chrysler's on the right-hand side, tilted at like 40 degrees. And the uh, Ford one, for the most part, is on the left side of the manifold, pretty much straight up and down. So, there is exceptions to that. Ford does make a Hemi. So, well, Hemi heads in a manifold and top block, I guess. But... And then continue on drilling. I pretty much do that every time I drill one out. I knock the leftovers out. I can't even see this camera. I'm hoping you can see this. I'm. I can't hold my phone and do this too, and I don't have a tripod. But I do got an iPad, I guess, or a, uh, it's a Samsung one with a camera. I'm going to try to set it up and angle it so I can take videos with it, see how that works. But this is, a uh, this isn't the, this isn't the how-to video for my car. This is just another engine for a, uh, a Bud, this is the top fuel Kenny Bernstein dragster I'm doing. Man, it's a nice kit. It's vintage. If you've never seen it before, it's a really nice kit. It's the car that broke the 300 mile an hour barrier back in 2001. His top fuel dragster. Building it for a friend of mine out of Alabama. Or I like to say the Alabama. Okay. There. I got them all knocked out. I go back through and ream them one more time a little bit. Make sure there's no leftover plastic in there because it'll, when you go to wire it and glue it and stuff, you get little pieces will come out and stick any glue on the side of the wire and you won't notice it unless you got your good old bifocal glasses on. I got these at, my vision is 20 I don't wear glasses, but I wear these when I, do stuff this small just because I don't want to drill a hole in my hand. I've got a scar right here. 
where I drilled, what was it, five eighths? It was a drill bit as big as round as the end of this hobby knife thing. The drill bit literally went through my hand into my knuckle and was poking the skin out on the other side up here between my knuckle. Yeah, it hurt. The doctor verified that. It was like six months later we went back in with my wife. She had gall blown, uh, gallbladder stones or something. And uh, she was sitting there in agony wanting to see the doctor and the whole time this doctor is the same one that treated my hand when I drained a drill bit through it. I think it was a three quarters inch bit, I ain't sure. <laughs> but uh, I asked him how many stitches did it need. And he says, stitches, son, there ain't nothing to sew to, it's a hole. We can't sew it. <laughs> he said, you just gotta let it heal shut. <laughs> and it did, but, well, I tell you what, boys, it hurt like the dickens. And that's a true story, so. Okay, now. I took these, I stripped the chrome, I shot these flat black, I drilled the holes. What I'll do next, I'll take silver, flat aluminum paint, I use acrylics, I'll put some on a piece of wax paper guys. I'll put a little thin smudge on wax paper and I'll wipe it over the top of the valve cover. What that does, these little lines in here, it colors the lines flat black and leaves the depth look into the valve cover still it's a lot it's easy I'll get that done I'll show you those before I do it but I'm gonna go ahead and mount these on the engine I'll bring the engine in and show you the wiring and the where I drilled the distributor cap out already and uh, we'll move on from there don't forget to watch for my uh, 57 soft seal Chevrolet kit on a, I'm gonna do a full build how-to from start to be start to end hopefully so you guys take care and uh, I'll holler at you later. It's Al Spence for Golf Coast Customs. Take care. Bye-bye.